Hello again. Today I'm talking about spatial representation. So in coverage model, we have made the assumption that every demand originates at points. Now these points could represent the centroid of geographic units, but so far we have used points. And we have said that these points, right, are covered by a facility, right? Let's put this facility right here, the center. As long they are within this distance, critical distance or coverage distance could also be a uh, time uh, time threshold, right, of maybe 5 or 10 minutes, or whatever uh, that parameter is, right? So this basically 1 if they are inside and 0 if they are outside. In reality, right, we rarely have um, data that is so disaggregated or uh, it's sometimes better to actually use uh, polygons. And this is the example to the right where we have now um, geographic units, right? This could be zip code or it could be census tract, for instance, in the US. For the simplicity, I've also added the centroid, so you can compare, right, with the example to the left. Now, if I look at this very carefully, what do I see? I see that a few of these geographic units here, this one here in the center, this one here, and finally this one, can be completely covered. While the others here, although they're centroid, is inside. I just put a couple here just so you see those are outside. Although they're centroid is inside that coverage distance, they are partially covered. And so how can we uh, actually use that information in a uh, coverage model is the next step. Just for clarification here, I have color coded in red those geographic units that can be partially covered. But then what do we do, right? What do we do with this remaining piece here? So do we say, for instance, that this area can be covered at maybe 80%, right? So this one may be also at maybe 75%, right? And so on and so forth. And then what do we do with geographic units whose centroid is outside, right? But they still have a little piece that is within the coverage radius. Do we account for them? Yes or no? And you will see that in GIS, this type of functionality can be done with a simple uh, spatial query. Um, and that can again be embedded within a Python program. So now let's look into the formulation. And prior to the formulation, of course, there might be new decision variables that will be introduced. So the idea here, right, it's, as you can see, it seems a little bit more accurate and maybe more precise because now we're going to say, okay, we can cover 75%, not just a zero one. And we're going to be able to uh, track partial coverage. So we introduce a new parameters, beta, and beta is a percentage coverage that is considered acceptable. So again, I could say that as long as this geographic unit is covered maybe 70% of the time, okay, that's good. Um, I have a new set and sub i with a little hat here, right? And that is the set of facilities that can cover at least beta percentage, so let's say 70% of each unit. And then finally, I have a new decision variable, v sub i is equal to one if Complete coverage is provided by two or more facilities for that particular demand um, unit I, and zero if complete coverage provided by a single facility. So now we can track, are there more than one facility that can cover that demand unit? At what level can we cover that particular demand unit? And so on and so forth. And so now we are going to take this um, formulation or, or these different, sorry, decision variables and parameters into the formulation that I will show just now. Okay, we are going now into the formulation of the problem. So this is similar to a set covering problem where we're trying to minimize the number of facilities that need to open, okay? And then we have uh, two constraints. Now, uh, it's slightly different than what you have seen before, but it does make a lot of sense. Uh, when you look at those two, uh, they are really um, uh, enforcing uh, this idea of uh, partial uh, coverage. Let's look at the first one. So here, um, 
we have the traditional number of facilities, right, that can cover a demand node should be greater or equal to 1 minus VI. Now, what is VI if you remember here? So VI is equal to 0 if complete coverage provided by a single facility. So if this is 0, right, so that should be simply that there must be at least one facility that can cover that demand node. Now, the second constraint is a little bit new because now we have the uh, set of facilities here that can provide partial coverage to the demand, right? Remember, this is n i, n sub i, with a hat, okay? Um, so the, the summation of these facilities that can provide partial coverage should be greater or equal to 2 times v i. Now, if v i is 0, v sub i is 0, then we don't need to have any facilities that can provide partial coverage. Because if v i is 0, then this, you know, must be, uh, must be that the constraint must be met, right? If VI is equal to 1, that means the complete coverage uh, can be provided by two or more facilities based on what we have seen before, right? So if um, <coughs> this is yeah, VI is equal to 1, so there must be at least at least two facilities that can provide uh, partial coverage, okay? And then, then in that case, this uh, is uh, 1 minus 1. Right, and then we don't have, we don't need any facility that can provide full coverage. So that's kind of the uh, balancing act. And then finally, you have uh, the integer constraint. Okay, so that's one way to represent partial coverage. There are other ways to do it, um, but I think this is really an improvement on this idea of using the <coughs> the point as opposed to maybe using a polygon.